These episodes of Bleach were simply glorious. Kubo and the studio are doing some spectacular work and I've truly enjoyed it. All of Bleach from 1 to now, the season finale had me wanting more and more and I look forward to Core 2. This video will be super long so I won't waste your time anymore with this intro. So let's get started and if I didn't say this before, since we will be covering the last two episodes of Bleach Core 1, Thousand Year Blood War and its manga counterpart, spoilers ahead. This week's episodes collectively covered nine and a half chapters. This would be half of chapter 533 and then the other chapters up to 542. In all that was roughly about 156 pages with 766 panels. So let's see what's been adapted and what's been forged into a new blade. This episode is titled Everything But The Rain, June Truth and we open up with Ishin presenting his report to the head captain and others. The chapter in the anime would follow the same path right up to when Masaki and her two friends are talking. We skip two panels of banter between them before she falls onto a very familiar stranger. When Urahara face becomes serious, this would be the start of the episode and the end of chapter 533 titled Everything But The Rain, OP6, The Gravitation. The episode would resume back at the Ishida residence. However, the chapter, which is 534, Everything But The Rain, OP7, Hole Of Reproach, would actually begin with Rangiku searching for the captain and then finding a note left by him. He's gone to the world of the living. Rangiku would be pissed off that he just left and even Toshiro would comment on it. But at the end of this on page 3 is where the chapter would catch up to the anime. Izumi confronts Masaki about her endeavors outside. The panel here that would be skipped would be that of Izumi holding on to Masaki's hand. In the next scene, Ryu would confront Kane about what she told Izumi and then head back to Masaki. The panel we see skipped here is this one, but the anime would have added an exclusive shot of some bloody towels which I think would be that of Masaki when she was injured. At any rate, she collapses and then he takes off with her. This is where we'd see an exclusive shot of him leaping away. The anime and manga would pretty much follow the same path when he meets up with Ishin after being saved from a hollow. Of course, we'd skip this panel of Ishin saying there's no need to thank him and Urahara who's come to save the day. This is where the chapter would end. Chapter 535 titled Everything But The Rain OP8 Defenders would start out with Masaki falling into a deep black abyss. The hollow seems to be ready to devour her soul. But let's skip ahead a bit to Urahara properly introducing himself. Within the panels where Ryu is seen shouting at him, we see that he's holding Masaki. However, in the anime, she was already laying down. I still counted this panel as a part of being adapted due to the dialogue. But we do skip the next panel where he is asked to place her down. Of course, the next scenes of the holification were anime exclusive scenes. Over this, we got some panels rearranged within the anime as well. You see, in the chapter, Urahara explains what soul suicide is. They react to him saying it was uncontrollable after it all. The anime combined these seven panels together and then gave their expressions. It took me a while to notice because the explanation here was a bit too convoluted for my taste. But in the end, we would ultimately only skip three panels. The same could be said of the other panels as well as pretty much it's much easier to follow in the anime. So if I missed anything, pardon me. Anyways, we follow the same path up to the scene when Ryu is saying that there is no way Ishin would accept such an unfavorable circumstance. He agrees right away, but in the chapter, Urahara had said something before he accepted. Of course, these panels were adapted a bit earlier in his speech. We move forward a little bit when Ishin is ready to get started and we skip the panel when Urahara is saying that he will start the procedure. When Ishin leaps into her inner world, he saves her just like Ichigo did for Rukia back in the Soul Society days. We don't see him pull his blade in the paneling and when he says I'm here to protect you, this is where the chapter would end. Chapter 536 titled Everything But The Rain OP9 June Truth which is the same as the title of the anime would start out with Ishin facing down Masaki's hollow. Within this scene, two panels were not adapted of Ishin commenting on how the hollow looks confused and the hollow's confused face. Before, he gets to get 10 shows it to Kingdom Come, which was pretty cool. In the next eight panels with banter between Ishin and Masaki, these were skipped. Basically, Masaki is happy to see Ishin and wanted to know his name, but she was butt naked and <laughs> we can see why this was skipped for good reason. And we skip these two panels as well. Seems like she really likes him. When the scene changes over, we see Ryu walking in the rain, feeling sad. We don't get a close-up of his feet as he talks to Kene while soaking wet. 
But after this, the anime and manga would pretty much follow the same path right up to when Masaki is leaving the Ishida household. The panel right after this was skipped saying that it was Ryu's decision to let her go. This scene with Masaki checking up on Ishin was also changed a little bit in that the door was removed. The anime and manga again would follow the same path until Ishin's explanation to Ichigo when Ishin says your mom died that day. This would be the end of the chapter and the first episode. We would resume after the outro with chapter 537 titled Everything But The Rain OP10 Prince Von Lich. The first panel we would see here missing would be that of a close up of Ichigo's face. This panel was actually placed a bit further in the anime, but instead we cut right back to Ishin explaining her abilities. There are a few panels missing here, I count 8 in all. Ichigo saying that he knows of Bloodveen from Urahara, the explanation of her strength, why she didn't get much injuries at the time White had bitten her, and why he didn't help. Because Ishin was confident in her ability to beat Grand Fisher. After that, we see more panels missing. This would be of him mentioning Ishida's mother and how she died three months after Masaki. This is how Ichigo ended up asking him what happened nine years ago. And then Ishin would explain the Quincy King's power and the legend. This is where we'd see a close up of Ichigo that was removed from earlier placed. The anime and manga would follow the same path until the episode ends when Ichigo says that he is going. The chapter though didn't end here, instead there were 2 pages and 10 panels additional which I'll cover in the end of the next episode as that's where they were placed. Episode 13 and chapter 538 titled The Blade Is Me and Standing On The Edge would start out with Ichigo, Ikumi and Ishin at the front of the Kurosaki clinic with Ichigo saying that he's heading off but he doesn't know where to go. Then Oetsu's assistant popping up and nabbing Ichigo. Did you notice that in the anime Ikumi is nowhere to be seen? I won't dive into that, but Ichigo is back in training with Asauchi. This is where we'd skip about 4 panels. These panels would include Oetsu's explanation to Ichigo that the gate is open for him for a strict time limit and that's why they were able to travel back and forth to the world of the living so easily. In the anime, we would see Ichigo walking through the Asauchi and they all bowing down to him. Then he chooses one from the back. Within the chapter, the Asauchi bow down. Ichigo turns around and he would pick the first one. At any rate, this is where the episode would begin and Oetsu says that he will forge Ichigo's new blade. The episode would start out in the Squad 10 barracks. The Shinigami are training. We would get our first few panels skipped here of two Soul Reapers discussing Toshiro losing his Bankai and some banter between them. Ironically enough, Toshiro shows up to train as well and then he joins the ranks. This is where we would see three more panels skipped of the guys reacting to him and then moving on. Right away, we skip the panel of the birds flying in the sky and just go right to Hisagi being escorted to start his new Bankai training. Now, I'm very interested to see where this plot goes because in the manga, it never really went anywhere and I'm looking forward to see how he adds to the upcoming battle. Wait, is that a spoiler? Until we cut to the research and development department where Akon is searching for the captain. We would actually skip the last few pages of the chapter of 538 and now we catch up in 539 titled Probless Progress. The anime and manga would follow the same path up to when Mario comes up to Mauricio asking him to play some ball with her. We do see where this panel was removed of him telling her to keep quiet. I'm guessing we don't really want to see him as a jerk to her but then the next four panels of the Omida household members were also skipped. Instead we focus on him playing ball with her and him saying that his captain went to train without him. But then we head over to Saji. This is where we backtrack a little to 538 when he entered the cave. We do skip these three panels, two of which is of Iba checking out the cave and he saw when Saji entered. When the great elder says, you have some nerve coming back here, this would be the end of chapter 538 and then we would continue to the pages of 539 when this scene would continue. We skip a small panel of Sajin's face right before the elder laughs at him and the scene would continue with Sajin and the elder facing off with only like one panel missing which is inconsequential. These two next panels I didn't see but you can be the judge of that. Ichigo and Oetsu slide down into a pool of water and when they land this is where four panels would be skipped off banter between Oetsu and Ichigo. Instead the anime gave us a scene which took me a while to process. I was like what the hell? And when Oetsu says you and Zangetsu would have to say goodbye this is where the chapter would end and the mid cut scene of the anime. Chapter 540 titled The Sword 5 would start out with Oetsu acting a fool as per usual. He does seem to get off on getting punished doesn't he? I have a lot to say about this scene but I'll move on for now. The only panel I saw here missing was that of Ichigo and the Asauchi reacting. We move on a little to where the Asauchi is turned into a living blade and flies through the sky. The panel where it lands in front of Oetsu was removed and we jump into the creation of the forge. We do get an anime exclusive scene of Nanomi carving out the rock. The rest of the scene would progress the same as the chapter. 
chapter, with Oetsu now forging Ichigo's blade and telling him that the hollow named White is where his real Zanpakuto powers were created. But then, who is the man impersonating Zangetsu? It's at this point that we get the revelation that the old man looks just like Yuha from a thousand years ago, and we get a close up of the old man's face. This is where the chapter would end. Chapter 541, titled The Blade and Me, would start out with Ichigo questioning the old man, trying to find out who he is and why he looks so much like Yuha. And I must say, this scene was beautifully crafted. The colors got me in awe and I loved every minute of it. Zangetsu's delivery of who he is, what he fights for, his motivations and why he's really there was beautifully crafted. And when the music score came on, it was even more perfect. But all in all, the entirety of chapter 541 would be adapted, each and every panel right up to when Ichigo is enveloped in light. This is where the chapter would end. The final chapter to be adapted would be chapter 542, titled The Blade and Me, and we would start out with a flashback of Ichigo's past battles while Zangetsu narrates. In the panels, Ichigo is seen floating downwards, while in the anime, he's actually running up to the surface, or rather, seemingly to his new power. The next three panels of Oetsu forging would be skipped. We would skip Oetsu explaining the evaporation of the sea, and we would just see Ichigo with his swords. Once he holds them firmly, we get two anime exclusive shots of the girl's reaction to his two blades and Oetsu saying that they are indeed real. The panels were also rearranged a bit more here. As in the anime, we saw him have a flashback and then the images of his Zanpakuto spirits above him. Within the chapter, we saw the images first and then the flashback, and this would be the end of the episode. However, there is more to come. The chapter would continue with two more pages. Once the title card is off the screen, we get a shot of Yuha introducing Ishida to the mix. To get these panels, we have to go back to chapter 537. There are only two panels that weren't adapted at this time, so I'll add them to the mix. A pretty beefy one. I truly loved it. It was a spectacular ending to a great season and a lot of surprises that I didn't even expect to see. I can't wait. I'm pumped for the next few. I'm pumped for the next episodes to drop, but we do have to wait a while for that. And I have a quick announcement about that at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. For now, let's jump into the numbers to see what was adapted and what was left out. Bleach episode 12 and 13 covered nine and a half manga chapters with each having an average of 15.6 pages, adding up to 156 pages in all. Each page would have an average of around 76 panels, all adding up to 766 panels, with 89 of those being unique or not adapted, which means only 677 panels would have been adapted, which gives us a split of roughly about 88.38% to 11.62%. A pretty stellar ending, I would say. This was a monumental task, just the writing alone took me nearly 6 hours and I bet the editing would take at least 12 hours, oh my goodness. Besides that, we also got a trailer for the next core of Bleach which is said to be released in July, which gives us about 7 or so months to cover Bleach in its entirety. Do you think that I can do it guys? <laughs> I think that I can do it. Um, I won't be doing a breakdown of the trailer, but if you say I should, I'll look into it. Anyway, this video has been pretty long as it is and I hope that you enjoy it. Thanks again for your support. I've been your host Kyle. Peace out and stay safe out there, V Nation. Bye.